and welcome. You may be seated. My name is Santana Macias Fontana, and it is my honor to serve as the chair of Bosque School's Board of Trustees. It is my supreme pleasure to be here today with all of you in the beautiful setting of Sanchez Park as we prepare to celebrate this momentous occasion. And this year, <laughs> it is my further honor to do so not only on behalf of the Board of Trustees, but also as a proud mother of one of our graduates. <laughs> as a trustee, I draw strength from reflecting upon our school's inspiration, inception, growth, and great achievement. I have developed a great appreciation for those who have served before me. Those who have faced challenging questions, made difficult decisions, and leaned into their passion for our community and our school's mission. It is upon the Board of Trustees, while working in collaboration with the head of school, to continue to plan ahead for those who will follow in our footsteps. Like those of you who were able to attend the Senior Thesis Colloquium, I was awed and inspired by the passion, confidence, and expertise of our graduates. Their presentations were a beautiful culmination of their growth and transformation into capable young adults and the opportunities afforded to them by being members of our incredible community. I look forward to hearing of their future endeavors and absolutely know that they will go on to do great things. And of course, none of this could be possible without the guidance and encouragement from the educators who are with our students day in and day out. Please join me in thanking Dr. Berry and all of the faculty for their dedication in providing a nurturing yet challenging and innovative environment where our students not only thrive, but have developed a love of learning. And now, on behalf of Bosque School's Board of Trustees, it gives me great pleasure to formally open this ceremony in celebration of Bosque School's graduating class of 2022. <laughs> Without further ado, I'd now like to welcome our head of school, Dr. Jesse Berry. Good morning, graduates, families, staffalty, and trustees. My name is Dr. Jesse Berry, and I'm Bosque's head of school, and it's my honor to welcome you to Bosque's 22nd commencement in celebration of the class of 2022. How interesting a coincidence is that, our 22nd commencement for the class of 2022. I want to start by acknowledging that we gather this morning on the ancestral homelands of the Puebloan people of the Rio Grande Bosque, one of Bosque School's core values is learning from place, and I ask that we all take a moment to take a deep breath and to ground ourselves in how fortunate we are to have moments like this in the context of what is happening in the world around us currently, and to honor with gratitude the land that provides such a rich and meaningful place of learning and growth and the people who have stewarded it throughout the generations.
I also want to take a moment to thank the first responders who have been working tirelessly to protect our campus and our city from the recent wildfire. In recent months, our students, including ninth grader Abigail Opal, who is over here, have been responsible for clearing much of the downed and dead fuel that exists in the Bosque. Abigail alone was responsible for clearing over 5,000 cubic feet of downed and dead fuel as part of her Eagle Scout project. In addition, our students in our wildlife class and in the philosophy immersive have all been involved with additional mitigation work in recent months. I have no doubt that this, these efforts made significant difference in terms of the nature of the fire that's just occurred right here. And finally, I want to offer a huge thank you to Mr. Dan Shaw, who was asked by the city to assess the fire operations from an ecological perspective and is a former fire chief. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Class of 2022, I've had the pleasure of spending the last three years with you, and it has been anything but dull. That can be seen just in what's happened in the last 24 hours alone. My first year at Bosque was your sophomore year. Things seemed to start out relatively calmly. As a way to learn as much as I could about the experience of students at Bosque, I spent a day shadowing students in every grade. On October 23rd, 2019, I became a sophomore again, following Emiliano through his daily schedule. My day started off with attending history class with Mr. Simpson, where I took part in a primary source analysis of the Confessions of Agament of Geneva alongside Aidan and Lance. Do y'all remember that? <laughs> or not? Next was English 10 with Ms. Zavitz, where you all were engaged in a guided free write on the graphic novel, Abina and the Important Men. Then on to biology with Ms. Briggs, where I first met Lenny the turtle. And I worked with Miel on reconfiguring amino acids to make new proteins, part of learning about a lion's digestive system. My day concluded with geometry, algebra two with Ms. Fillmore, where Christiane, Trinity, and Lance helped me struggle through the geometry problem of the day and the very painful realization of how little of my math high school education had actually stuck. This was my first day getting to know your class and my notes and photos are a cherished time capsule of our first date. In the months to come, I got to sit in on your applied DEI seminars cheer you on in a variety of athletic games, chaperone your tri-school dance, experience the brilliance of your performing and tech skills in The Little Prince and Into the Woods, and see your talents on display in the fall and winter concerts and art shows. I sat in morning meeting as Dr. Leacock first presented on the concept of immersives to all of you. And I shared in the energy and excitement of the school-wide watch party in Buttiger Hall that led to our Bobcats winning our first ever state basketball championship. <laughs> and then everything changed. Three quarters of the way through your sophomore year, we shifted to what we thought would be three weeks of remote learning and turned the whole school year upside down for the next year and a half. You are unfortunately kept from so many of the traditions and opportunities of being high school students as you shifted to Zoom rooms, masks, social distancing, fears, and disappointments. Your senior year started a little more optimistically with watching a stunning sunrise on the top of Bedeger Hall. You finally got to return to in-person morning meetings in Bedeger, stage performances in the black box, and a full year of athletic seasons. You have also been the first class that I got to watch have a true prom, an in-person senior colloquium with an actual audience, and now a graduation free from drive-throughs or limited attendance. The past three years have been a true roller coaster ride, 
and your class has been unavoidably jostled around quite a bit. I would imagine it's been quite hard to feel grounded as individuals and as a class, given all of these changes. Your class had the deepest upper school experience of knowing how things used to be before they changed, and therefore the most opportunity to feel authentic loss and grief for the way things were. When I think about your high school experience, I keep coming back to a concept known as the messy middle. I first heard about this concept in a podcast by Brene Brown. Sorry, Mr. Knox in September of 2020. And most recently, I came across a national best-selling business book written by Scott Belsky with the same title. Belsky's book focused on the mere 10% of startup ventures that are ultimately successful and researched what separates them from the 90% of businesses that ultimately fail. What he found was that the key to success is how leaders and companies navigated the messy middle. Brene Brown, in her research, affirms similar findings. Messy middles are inevitable in any process and reflect the shift from the honeymoon phase, when everything is shiny and exciting, full of promise and potential, to a noticeably different space when the glare of reality starts to sink in and things get hard. You have all likely experienced hundreds of honeymoons during your tenure at Bosque. Your elation and daily joy to absorb and be all things Bosque as sixth graders. The shared excitement of the start of a set design for a new production. The forming of your athletic team and the start of a new season feeling connected and inspired by a new teacher, finding an instant kindred spirit in a new friend, falling in love, being fired up by your chosen thesis topic, settling and being really excited about your college or next step choice. And you have also experienced countless messy middles. The first time that new friend let you down, the test that you felt so well prepared for and then your grade didn't match up with your expectations. When your team or group started to experience significant conflict for the first time. When your thesis topic all of a sudden didn't feel really inspiring, but instead an endless slog. And of course, the year and a half of your high school experience that was radically turned upside down by a global pandemic. With little warning and with absolutely no fault of your own, you were splintered from your friends, your teachers, your team, your community, and your routines. My guess is that there were many days where you felt discouraged, disconnected, and questioning the point of even writing another essay, completing another lab report, or even getting out of bed. It was hard finding joy in those days. Messy middles often bring with them some version of an existential crisis where we find ourselves filled with self-doubt, apathy, and questioning our commitments and purpose. Some of you may remember my very feeble attempts at engaging with TikTok as a way to try and stay connected to all of you in those early months of the pandemic. I was personally struggling with my sense of disconnection as the energy I get from interacting with all of you and your fellow students is the motivation that helps me push through my own daily messy middles. And yet, there is unexpected opportunity in these moments. Brene Brown shared, the middle is messy, but it's also where all the magic happens, all the tension that creates goodness and learning. Having recently rewatched those TikTok videos, which I will share was deeply humbling and unbelievably cringy. I wouldn't describe them in any way as magical, but they did remind me of how vulnerable I was willing to be in my search in, of creative new ways to live into my value of connection. And I have to say, I need to finally award the MVP 
for the TikTok challenge videos I was doing, which definitely went to Anna and her sister Nola and her mom, who danced alongside Luna the lizard. That was pure magic. <laughs> Brene Brown goes on to share, there's interesting research that says, if learning is not uncomfortable, you're not really learning. If this is true, Bobcats, we should probably be giving you not only your high school diploma, but also your dissertations today, because I think you might have just earned them with all the discomfort of the past few years. Each of you was faced with a crash course in flexibility and resilience. You had little chance but to reconfigure the way you engaged with school, the way you stayed connected to your friends, and how you continued to live into your values, also how you found your joy. You faced levels of discomfort that I wish we could have buffered you from, but that inevitably gifted you incredibly significant life lessons about yourself, lessons that some people avoid for the better part of a lifetime. You were forced to find ways to identify and optimize your strengths and acknowledge and enhance, or at least compensate for, your growth edges. Your integrity was challenged over and over again. And you officially made it through the messiest middle that a Bosque graduating class has experienced, at least in my time here. And you coming out the other side, making it to this exact moment, is no small feat. I might say that what you learned and how you grew due to your navigation of this messy middle is far more significant to your comprehensive education than making it through geometry or submitting your senior thesis. I wish I could tell you that you've officially checked the box of your lifetime of messy middles, but the inconvenient truth is that you will find yourself in a similar place over and over again in your future. Whether it be questioning if you made the right choice for your college or for your major, hitting a bumpy patch in a new relationship, or during the inevitable career ups and downs. The reassuring news is that you've already had extensive and authentic depth of experience and proven success in navigating your way through them. Class of 2022, it's not been easy. It's not been smooth. And because of that, you are even more ready for the opportunities and challenges that lie ahead. It has been my honor to spend the last three years with you. You will forever be a part of all of our memories of a life-changing moment in history. And you will forever be beloved members of the Bosque School community. You are inspiring, you are brilliant, you are brave, you are principled, and you are ready. We believe in you and we are so proud of you. Congratulations, Bobcats. And I'm now so honored to welcome to the stage our senior address speaker, Sean Cervantes. Hello and welcome on this beautiful Friday morning. My name is Sean Cervantes and I will be giving a speech on behalf of the class of 2022. A little backstory before I get into my speech. Just at the beginning of this month, I was sitting at my computer reading the email that graduation speakers were needed. And I thought to myself, why not try out, right? Do something outside my comfort zone, something I'm not used to. But I was thinking, oh, you know, so many other people are going to volunteer and I won't be chosen. Everything will be okay. Well, it turned out I was really the only one to volunteer, so <laughs> here I am. <laughs> oh, thank you guys. But more importantly, 
here we are. We did it. We made it. The graduating class of 2022, everyone. Come on, let's hear it one more time. And I don't know about everyone here, but I'm still having a lot of trouble comprehending that. Seven years. And even if you joined us freshman year, or just last year, it feels like you've been with us since day one. Seven years sounds like a lot of time to me. But I swear, to me personally, it felt like seven minutes. Okay, that might have been a little bit of exaggeration, but it still went by very, very fast. I was recently reflecting back on when I started here in sixth grade, my little sister was in preschool, starting kindergarten the next year. And now, as of yesterday, she's a seventh grader. It's as if I'm on a, yeah, let's clap for Abby. Abby Cervantes. And Nick Cervantes too, my brother. Um, it's as if I'm on a road trip, staring out the window, and I'm trying to focus on what's passing by, but it's just moving too fast. It feels like I was meeting a lot of these people up here for the first time, and now I might be saying goodbye to some of them for the last time. We just finished the most formative years of our lives, and certainly it wasn't easy. We are very privileged to go to a school such as Bosque, but we still find our challenges here. Not only did we face academic stress, but the pressure of trying to figure out who we are, what our place is in the world, and simply put, we were just trying to figure out what was going on. And of course, we haven't figured that out, and I doubt any adult here has figured that out as well, and they might be lying to you. <laughs> but <laughs> we started on the journey to discovering who we are and what this, word me what this world means to us, and that is what matters. The challenges we faced, whether they are big or small, loud or silent, the fact is we overcame them and stood up on the stage today. We waded through hardships and heartbreaks, lows and highs, the loss of community members, and even a global pandemic. But every time life tried to knock us down, we dusted ourselves off and got right back up. So what's important to remember when we're here to celebrate is the fact that we did it, and with that comes so many emotions. Joy, happiness, relief, fear maybe, sadness, and many more. Even if you've been ready to leave the school for a while now, it's hard not to be sad. This is it. We made it through middle and high school, and you only do that once. But it's best not to dwell too much on the past. It happened, and we can't change that. We can't change the homeworks we didn't turn in, the times we were late to class, the dances we missed, or the friendships we didn't make. But what we can do is look forward to the greatness that is to come. And so, I'd like to take some time to speak to my class and ask everyone to take some deep breaths. Be here now, under these great cottonwoods that protect us from the sun. And it's not windy now, but imagine the wind lightly blowing through the leaves. <laughs> Deep breaths. Take in the beauty of the campus on which you grew up, and one you are saying goodbye to. And I'd like you to look out into the crowd and find the faces of family, friends, teachers, the faces of people who are so, so proud of us, of everything that we have done and everything that we will do. Bosque, this school, and the people that make it up, the staff, faculty, coaches, even the geese, or Jojo the porcupine, <laughs> they have all taught us so much. Yes, rest in peace, Jojo. But above all else, the people here have taught us, taught us how to be decent human beings, how to love, how to be kind, how to care, how to lead, and how to make the change we want to see in this world. So here we are at the ending of our time at Bosque School. But looking at the bigger picture, we are simply at the beginning. We also have a very, very long road ahead of us, one that we filled with great challenges, but also great happiness. And I'm glad to have started this journey with this class. All of my classmates, and probably most people out in this crowd today, know me as a very quiet person. I like to use the term reserved, but this is probably the most you've ever seen me speak before. <laughs> and I am, so I'm indeed very quiet, but because of that, I tend to listen more than I speak. Therefore, I believe I've been able to watch this class grow and change over these past seven years. And we've had our fair share of issues, one might say. Problems that will stick with us forever. But from what I've observed, collectively and individually, everyone who is a part of the graduating class of 2022 is going to do some incredible things in their lives. And I, for one, can't wait to see what my classmates will achieve in the future. I told myself I did not take Latin, four years of Latin, for nothing. 
So in the words of the famous Roman poet Virgil, Sikitor ad astra, which translates to, yes, thank you, Ms. Alvarez and Dr. Kratzer. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful line teachers. Come on, let's hear it. That translates to, thus, one journeys to the stars. And so we're off, off to explore the stars. And Bosque has given us the tools to do so. Most of us will head to college to refine those tools, but some of us are ready to use them right away. In either case, we have spent the past seven years building wings, and now it's time to fly, to take on the larger world which exists beyond this community. One, we are somewhat shielded from here at Bosque, but one we must now face. And although one might feel great sadness at our departure, I believe one can also find great happiness from looking back at what we have, what we have accomplished, and even better, the great things we will accomplish. So here's to the ending, or really only the beginning. Thank you. sit real quick. Please. Stand, please. Tonight's the night when we forget about the deadlines. It's time.
Okay, hey, hello everyone. My name is Katya Chavez. I've been at Bosque through both middle school and high school. In this, Bosque School's 27th year, it is a momentous occasion that the person I'm about to introduce is the first ever graduate of Bosque School to give the commencement address. Cooper Tizak graduated from Bosque School in 2017 on his way to study chemical engineering at Arizona State University. During undergrad, he rode for the club crew team and participated in a solar panel recycling research project. Through that project, he found his passion in the energy materials research space, which led him to pursue a PhD in chemical engineering at the University of Colorado Boulder. He is currently a first year student in the Musgrave group studying computational electrocatalytic materials design. He incorporates machine learning in his research as well as his personal projects. He hopes to design catalysts that will facilitate the transition to a carbon neutral economy. Some other fun facts known to us at Bolske School about Cooper are that while here, he played varsity basketball, varsity soccer, sang in cantate, and he started the famous Copa de Cooper soccer tournament in the quad that went on for many years with fierce competition for the title. Other notable facts are that for his senior thesis, Cooper built a fuel cell to test different oxidation catalysts. Finally, he was the 2017 recipient of Bosque School's President Gerald R. Ford Character Award. And now it is my honor to welcome to the stage Bosque School's commencement speaker, Cooper Tiza.
Thanks, Katya. Congratulations to the class of 2022. <laughs> Through the challenging times you've endured, you've produced great academic feats, impressive athletic victories, and beautiful works of art. The world eagerly awaits your creativity and ability to make change. Now, typically these speeches are made with some intention to give advice. Some human brain spilling over with knowledge takes the podium and expresses some of the secrets of life to the newly graduated class. I'm a 23-year-old graduate student, and I can confidently say I'm almost as ignorant as I was five years ago. <laughs> My goal is not to let you in on the secrets of life, but to expose an error in the hope you, you all may avoid it. And unfortunately for the audience, the selection committee chose a STEM graduate student, so prepare to get a little technical. The world of a recent graduate is full of bad measurements. We, the people that need to hire, educate, and train you, have created an array of numerical and categorical measurements that try to capture you. Whether it be GPA, test scores, nationality, etc., we map you onto a space defined by these measurements. Sometimes we do this to predict how successful you'll be at our institution. Other times we do it to build a more diverse workforce. In the worst use case of these measurements, we use them to measure if you're prestigious enough for our organization. Broadly, we take these measurements to condense you, a complex, multifaceted person, into a number that either falls above a threshold or doesn't. But there are big problems with this approach. The first of which, these metrics are incapable of capturing your complexity. Whether it be your emotional intelligence, communication ability, or commitment to community, the typical metrics cannot capture these traits. They cannot measure the most important things about you. Now, this isn't to say that you can't take pride in the achievements you've made. Rather, recognize the achievements for what they are, an endorsement of your hard work and perseverance, but not a judgment of your character. Another problem. Humans misuse these metrics. Daniel Kahneman and Amos Tversky, throughout their careers, exposed co the cognitive biases that skew human decision-making, particularly when dealing with quantitative data. In one experiment Kahneman reviewed, parole judges' decisions to grant parole were compared to the time since they had last eaten. The results showed that freshly after a meal, the parole judges granted a large percentage of paroles, which steadily declined up until their next meal. You can be confident that the blood sugar of your application reviewer has a substantial impact on their assessment. And, as important as your resume font is, you might lose out to a worse application that happens to be closer to a turkey sandwich. The third problem with these metrics, they don't measure fulfillment. Lifetime happiness is not determined by the numerical identifiers assigned to you right now. I can't claim I have any understanding of what leads to a fulfilling life, but I'm confident the weighted average of your grades in high school has little bearing. And now, as promised, I'd like to expose my own error. I put too much stock into the metrics. A good grade was an endorsement of my value, and all that matters was that the numbers kept climbing. It became hard to unentangle my personality from my academic performance as measured by test scores and admission to selective programs. The more I identified with the test scores, the less time I spent pursuing what made me passionate. And more importantly, it was depressing. It was heart-wrenching to feel my value crumble under the weight of a bad test score. If you take one thing away from this talk, let it be this. Your identity is so much more complex than these metrics. Your identity is defined by things like your love for baseball, your fascination with oil painting, or the tireless attention you pay to maintaining friendships. Your identity is indescribable and certainly not measurable by a bubble test. Why is it that no one else is interested in these metrics? I'm sure you would find it strange if, during a physical, your doctor asked for your Algebra two grade or if your husband listed your SAT scores in his wedding vows. <laughs> Why don't you screen your friends with a simple check of their FICO score? Human complexity is inescapable, yet sometimes we feel so comfortable ignoring it. I want to close my speech with a request to the newly graduated class. Challenge the way you are assessed. Be wary incorporating assessments into your identity, and approach the verdict of selection experts with skepticism. Design new models for capturing human complexity so that talented people, like you all, are not filtered out of roles that you excel in. Thank you, and again, congratulations.
Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Spree McDonald. I'm the head of the upper school here at Bosque. Um, we are nearing the end of today's ceremony, and I would like to again acknowledge everyone whose hands have gone into making this event, from MRC back there, always ready to spring to action, to all of our many crews here and teams at Bosque, as well as the, the first responders out in the Bosque right now, um, helping protect us. Can we give all of these people a round of applause? So it's a tradition at Bosque for the upper school head to give the final speech of commencement as the faculty address. Um, I think this is probably because for many years somebody much funnier than I am occupied this role, and this probably made it worth the wait. Uh, for me, this time slot can be a challenge, in part because I'm not always that funny, if you ask this year's seniors. Um, also in part because most people are pretty ready to be done with the speeches by now and get on with the, sh with the show. Fair enough. Um, it's also kind of difficult to deliver this speech every year because I can feel the responsibility to name all that hasn't been named, honor what has not been honored, and synthesize the many threads and themes that have been shared today by the previous speakers. This task is difficult in, on its own, perhaps because such moments as this are probably full of every emotion and meaning at the same time. From relief to dread, to mourning, to hope, to exaltation, to wondering if you're me where the closest restroom may be. <laughs> Something like the messy middle Dr. Barry referred to. And while these ceremonies, of course, celebrate the potential of the future, they are somehow unavoidably always full of the past. So it's hard to name and honor all of that at once. For example, how many students are sitting here today who feel the hints of deep relief about to come when they walk across the stage soon? As well as some sadness that some part of this experience of childhood and school life has passed not to be revisited. And I wonder how many parents are here today who are feeling tremendous hope for their children while also longing for those moments with them that have passed, such as the first days of school, the moments of joy and heartbreak as they have grown through so many stages together, the humble daily routines of family life we thought would go on forever, and through which we have quietly told our children again and again that we love them, and so on. 
All such memories and emotions of the past and future are surely here, alongside present feelings of anticipation, the uncomfortable pinch of a new pair of shoes, the unfamiliar tightness of a tie if you're me, the sensation of smoke in the air from this week's fire, and so on. In other words, there's just no one way to wrap all those thoughts up and feelings into a tiny, tidy, efficient message. But here we are, and I'm giving it a shot. I have greatly appreciated that the speeches shared before mine today have resisted settling into one clear meaning of what this event should mean, including Cooper's keynote just now, which pushed back against the ways that traditional education can dehumanize us by teaching us to limit and judge ourselves, locking down stories of who we are, who we were, and who we can become. I'd, rather, I'd much rather wade with Cooper into the mystery of human complexity, as he called it, and I'm reminded by Cooper's speech of a saying by the meditation teacher Vinnie Ferraro, who had his own MTV special when I was in high school, that goes, they say the greatest kindness you can do for someone is to liberate them from the story you have about them. I think this is so for others, but I also think it is so for ourselves. Sometimes when we have learned stories about ourselves that we simply cannot find our humanity in, the greatest kindness we can probably do is to liberate ourselves from our own stories. Similarly, Sean Cervantes' invitation to us a few minutes ago to pause and appreciate to be here now in these last few minutes among these familiar and stunning surroundings seems like a pretty healthy way to make peace with what has been, is now, and will be. This essential message of mindfulness that Sean shared reminded me of a famous story about the Thai monk Ajahn Chah, who once reportedly gestured to a glass on the table beside him and remarked something like this. I love this glass. I love the way it holds my drink so gracefully, how the light reflects through it, how I can count on it to fit my hand just perfectly. But I also love this glass because, because I know that someday it will break and transform into something new. When I think of this story, I think about moments like this very one we are in together now, when the past, the present, and the unavoidable changes to come are so intensely and beautifully present together. Like Sean's invitation for us to be here now, I'm reminded of something once written by the Jesuit priest and founder of Homeboy and Homegirl Industries in Los Angeles, Father Greg Boyle, who once wrote, everything on this side of death is requesting the honor of our presence. I invite us to appreciate Sean's invitation for us to step into the presence of this profound moment and to also appreciate how the class of 2022 has invited us into that magical space again and again. As my colleagues would surely agree, it has been such a gift as educators and as humans to have the honor of having our presence so full of these seniors for the past several years, through good times and bad, and to be part of a community that values such deep humanizing relationships, even when things get really, really, really real but nonetheless make us long, at least sometimes, to not see them end. Sean's an old soul, so he may be aware of the spiritual teacher Ram Das, who made Be Here Now, which he referenced in his speech, a famous mantra in his 1971 book by the same title. Ram Das had another well-known statement that be, may be more meaningful to our graduates very soon when they leave home for a while and then come back to visit. Speaking to his followers who perhaps began to believe sometimes that they had achieved enlightenment and transcended worldly concerns in their time away from home, Ram Dass famously would challenge them by saying, if you think you are enlightened, go spend a week with your family. <laughs> Graduates, perhaps this resonates now, perhaps not. But I'm sure that it will resonate much more after you have gone off on your adventures and then returned home for the holidays not just to the family of your household, but also to the family of your beloved high school community. The abrupt and somewhat uncanny reminder in this statement by Ram Dass is for me that yes, of course we change, and we change a lot, but in many ways we do not. The old does and will persist in the new, and if Ram Dass or Ajahn Chah are correct, that is simply unavoidable and completely okay. Students, the class of 2022, I joined Boski's Upper School along with you in the fall of 2018. I would be lying if I said I remembered those first moments with you distinctly, or much of what has happened in between. In all honesty, it has been a blur. 
a very intense blur that seemingly that the seemingly endless reel of national tragedies and even the near catastrophic, catastrophic fire we face this week have only served to make more blurry. These changes and upheavals have repeatedly overtaken the mundane of everyday life and pushed high school life into an intense crucible at times that has surely undeniably changed us all in our own ways. This has made school life often unsettled but has also thrown into relief the times and spaces in which you truly modeled for yourselves, those close to you, and for all of us who were part of your journey, deep and transformational compassion. More than once, I have watched you individually and in small groups liberate yourselves and others in the community from the stories you have about them and move forward in community. Speaking for myself, myself and my colleagues, it has been an honor to be invited into your presence the class of 2022. Thank you for sharing your humanity with us and transforming us all in the process. And thank you for your kind attention to this speech. Graduates, the great news is that you have finally endured your final lesson as Boskey School students. Now let us prepare to award the class of 2022 their diplomas. Will the first row please rise and approach the stairs. Isabella Ann Adams. Dale Janae Albrecht. Lauren Anderson. Nicholas Riley Bland. Carter Andrew Bogard. Yeah. Hawthorne Cecilia Bulger Witherspoon. Yeah. Aiden Campbell Brennan. Lauren Marie Buffett. Luke Erickson Carbono. Anale Nyambi Cariaga Coleman. John Alexander, Alexander Cervantes. Katia Elena Chavez. And on his birthday, Santiago Adan Chavez. <laughs> <laughs> Phoebe Cooper <laughs> Carter Timothy Erickson Lola Grace Estes. Yeah. 
Elena Finnegan. Christian Miguel Fontana, accepted by his mother, Dr. Santana Fontana. Enrique Cantrell Garcia. Annalisa Gray Gilboard. Jamie Marie Gist. Emiliano Miguel Gomez. Jaden Claudia Gregory. Bennett Robert Gray Hart. Davy Laurel Holdsworth. Lauren Whitney Hutchinson. Ryla Shamash Jaffer. Everett Bennett Jenkins. Andre Jordan Khan. Zerail Azure Lamour. <laughs> Levi Jackson Lazar Lewis. Jack Philip Mahoney. Rain Georgiana McCullough. Tahir Hanif Mohammed. Seth Austin Monde. Davis Brooks Moran. Aldo Francisco Morelli. Elijah Redmond O'Hanlon. <laughs> Caitlin Grace Patchell. Lance McLean Reese. Chloe Lee Ruddle. Luke 
Ryan Rubal. Anthony Ray Sanchez. Yeah. Bo Michael Schomburg. Alex Jeanette Schesser. Trinity Brooklyn Jade Perea Sinath. <laughs> Andrea David Spadaccini. Paolo Andreas Vela. Jake Roger Vermeer Hansen. Josie Pearl Vesbach. Olivia Erickson Webster. Jasper Max Bassain Wiseman. Miel Karina Wiwerka. Connor Hudson White. Yeah. Isabella Nero Wilkinson Brennan. Yeah. Constance Stella Youngman. There are photographs being taken behind the stage. <laughs> Members of the class of 2022, please rise and move your tassels from right to left. Members of the Bosque School community, please join me in congratulating our newest graduates, the class of 2022.